Here we go, replay analysis part 2. Your turn to ban. It falls to me to inform you that this one is We'll begin this by analyzing the starting items first. And in this case, Storm is our purchase invoker. Invoker by itself doesn't cast that many spells, especially not at the early levels, so one this kind of an overkill. In this case, I would just say get a faster bottle. One isn't useful here. Especially versus Invoker, who has the same movement speed as Storm, but doesn't have a wave clear capabilities until later levels. Invoker cannot contest, contest runes as good as Storm, since Storm can just push out and Invoker can do much about it. But most you can do in Walker is just summon a force spirit to get the rune for him, deny the rune for Storm. But not many players do that since they tend to use the force spirits to help with less hits. So I ideally versus Invoker a Storm might want ch uh, just the Tango's branches and a quick battle. Even the salve isn't that necessary since Invoker's they they don't deal burst damage until level 3 and 4. They just focus on last hitting. The uh, in this game, I'm not seeing any ward for the mid, which is absolutely essential if... if Storm is playing versus Invoker, who, like I said, is not good at denying runes or getting runes himself. So, my first priority in this game would be to cover the, cover the vision, then get battle. If there's no ward given, just buy one yourself, place it, and you have advantage already. Now for the laning, uh, separating creeps at the start is really good, that's a good play, since Invoker now has to choose between taking harassment or getting, getting the range creep, and he missed his range creep, which is really good. Storm is at an advantage now. And killing, killing it with the remnant, the range creep is also very good. So far, it's a good start. Besides not having vision, but in this case, uh, there has been like five seconds, maybe more, uh, where Storm could have pulled the creeps back, like he did now. But this is very late. Uh, the general rule of thumb is: if the creeps are not in perfect position, make them so. Always pull if needed. By separating the creeps, you're always making the other player choose whether to get a last hit or harassment. And as long as he has more than one goal, it's good to make him choose since he will miss some some part of the goals. I'm not sure if, my, if I'm making sense since I'm not doing these quite often. But eventually I'll hope I'll grow into it, so just stick with me, with my ramblings. Anyway. In this case, uh, let's put up. Let's pull up a uh, camera. So what we got here, here in this situation is uh, Invoker has pulled creeps. Now, on those situations, I've told countless times to people, you must go to the creep immediately. If you attempt to last hit the range creep with just your ranged attack, Invoker will just pull aggro and your own creeps will stop hitting the target. Which is exactly what happened. Let's watch it. Storm is preparing the right click, but since Invoker has moved the creeps from, from the range creep, he is no longer receiving damage and the right click attack will not be enough. Which is exactly the case. That was a good play by Invoker, and like I said, in this case, the Storm should always move in and last hit with a Remnant to make sure that the last hit sticks. And yeah, missed, missed an eye there as well. Not getting bottle. As a storm versus a hero that does not take runes well, is again, it's just uh, bad for laning. Since you're not taking every advantage the lane is giving you. Denied. 
Besides that, laning is going well, I would say. Last hits are pretty fair for a Storm vs Invoker matchup where Invoker has the higher damage. So nothing too horrible here. I would say in these cases when a player leaves the lane, Storm should always try to clear the wave as fast as possible, as uh, because he's uncontested. Un uncontested in that case. Let's watch this again. When Invoker leaves for the lane, Storm can take all four creeps with just two remnants. By the time Invoker gets back. Now in reality. Storm got two, I think, because Invoker got back and, and began denying three, but the range creep got denied, which is bad. Now, if if the storm actually got the uh, whole four creeps cleared. Invoker would have been met with uh, four creeps killing him and would most likely either disengage or die, which is in both cases favorable. Let's continue. Hi, I'm Gabe Newell. You've just achieved and one more thing I forgot to mention, if the player has branched Tango available, use it as soon as your health drops a little. Because versus uh, heroes that can burst you, like Invoker, he can burst you. You should aim to keep your health high at all points. In this match, I believe uh, Storm's health got dropped below 50% before he started using the tang branched Tango, which allowed him to die more easily. Let's remind this again. Getting back to my point about creeps earlier, if there's like less creeps pulling on the range creep, uh, usually a higher levels overload stack attack is sufficient. No need to get close, since there's less of a damage swing. I'm not sure if I'm explaining this correctly, but three three creeps when the aggroed create a much bigger damage swing, which make it harder to last hit. But two creeps, two creeps, or the higher overload charge allows Storm to control when to attack for the last hit more easily. I'm not sure if I'm making sense on this. Moving on. And still there is no ward whatsoever. Emphasizing again, Storm should always have vision on the wards. This is a really late battle, and if battle was picked up earlier along with the rune, that, that would have been like 500 health, health and mana two times during the course of this laning stage. Which is huge. I'm gonna fast forward to the jungle a bit, nothing useful here. The player is stacking, which is really good. That's a good way to catch up on the farm if the, if the laning wasn't ideal. Or boost the farm otherwise. Amazing what you found laying around. Now, I don't know what happens next, but uh, Storm has just hit 5 and Invoker is 6, and in Invo Invoker has a really good kill potential from this from this point onward, so Storm should be really careful how is he approaching the lane. I would say that unless Storm has full HP, he should not venture further than his own high ground to be safe, since a Tornado Meteor combo with a Cold Snap can absolutely burst him down. Uh, 
And if if we're watching the creeps position, uh, Invoker has two range creeps, which means that the lane will naturally be pushed to Storm's side. So all Storm has to do here is sit from afar, maybe try to get a last hit with an overload charge, and eventually the wave, the wave will come to him, and which he can say more safely clear from under the tower if needed. That's a good position. Always recognize when the wave is going to start pushing to you and wait it out. Although this invoke is playing really passively. He just he just uh, buffs himself for last hits and doesn't attempt to harass at all. And when he does it's really low effort. Look at this. Really low effort. Which Storm can just salve up easily. Usually invokers would and should be more aggressive against Storm, especially out of position Storm, which he now was. So it's minute 6, we still don't have any vision, and runes are still not being picked up. I'm gonna keep saying this until the end of the game. God, get some goddamn vision on the runes. It's game changing. Okay, let's skip through this. Storm is 6 now, which means he can always clear the waves really safely. Without risk of dying. Unless Invoker pulls off some really good cold snap timings. Which is rare. Or unless Invoker has double damage, in which case I would again be really really careful showing in the lane. But this invoker is kind of, I don't know, sloppy. He keeps wasting cold snaps with no real damage done. And in this case, since cold snap was wasted, Storm could just return to the lane and secure entire creep wave with just zipping around. Now, because the battle was skipped with no vision and no runes picked up, now the items are coming in really late. What is this invoker doing? Not even sure. Oh, that was a clarity. Okay, okay. Uh, let's talk about laning goals for each player. Like Invoker, with this much ahead, he is almost twice the net worth of the storm. With this much net worth, he should be clearing out every single wave and then going, uh, go and threaten other waves. He can take towers now with the advancement, but he still. He sits here and last hits every single creep manually, wasting time. Which is bad for him and good for Storm. Storm himself should do what he's kind of doing now, but not extremely efficiently, is having good mana pool with the clarities, maybe get some mangoes, clearing the waves and heading to the jungle to maximize his own farm. So what can I say is both mid players are, pl are playing really passively, they're not utilizing their maximum advantage with the regeneration, with the battle, with the runes, with clarities, with mangoes, and all they do is rotate slowly between the wave and the jungle. No objectives are being taken, and no one's utilizing on the extra farm. There we go, 8 minutes ward, that's beautiful, finally. Clarities are up. Let's get maybe get some stack going. Nope, nothing to stack. Okay. And because of this passiveness and the lack of vision, the, the items are really late for storm. Now, and in, we, we can actually talk items now as well. If the laning was less than ideal, in this case, la laning was less than ideal. Uh, Midas doesn't doesn't really work here because it's really late for it. Don't have any half boots. Uh, but looking at the enemy heroes, there is nothing. Actually, really, really lo nothing that threatens Storm's mid game. X wouldn't have blink just yet. Budge is. Pudge has like 50% of catching Storm in the hook and dismembering. Juggernaut is not a threat ever. Same with Dazzle. 
So in this case, aggressive orchid would work kind of well. I myself would go maybe recommend Yules, Kaya and Yules, since this allows Storm to be aggressive without investing too much farm. That's a nice save. That was beautiful. I thought he was gonna die here. There we go. I jinxed it. I jinxed it. Okay, let's see how all the other lanes are doing. Offlane Slardars... Wait, that's, that's, that's him, his Slardar. What is he doing here? I'm confused. So yeah, Axe is like halfway to, through the blink. So I'm, I'm guessing by the time Axe has blink, Storm should have Kai and be halfway to Yules, maybe. Hopefully. Their own safe lane... Chuggernauts. He has interesting item build, no wave bands. Just rushing Yasha, no, not even Battle Fury, I'm not sure what's happening with the Juggernaut. But if I was a Storm and I saw their carry going for unusual item builds like Yasha, it enables Juggernaut to fight a lot and don't spend that much, that much time farming. This tells me as a Storm that I will need to be helping team uh, deal with the fighting Juggernaut. Which again emphasizes the needed build for Eules and Kaya. To be effective in the middle game, mid game. Invoker is still not doing, not doing anything useful. Storm is still sitting in the jungle. Now, one thing as one thing as playing Storm is a uh, player should always seek out other lanes and check if there's skill potential. Like Storm from level six, he doesn't even need any items because the ultimate and one point in the vortex is enough to secure the kill with the help of other players. Top tower is under like in this case, he could easily help with the uh, pangolier and the gang, with the gankings. Especially if Invoker showed up and he can help turn the tide. But since they completely blew it away, good guy, they got counter ganked. Where is Storm actually? Oh, in the base. If enemy mid player has left the lane, that's the perfect opportunity to go push deeply, even a couple of waves and get some hits into the tower. Like, if the enemy leaves, uh, Storm has two options now. Either counter gank in the bottom lane, which we just realized was not a good idea. Or go for a pushing, which is exactly what the storm is doing. That's good, that's good, that's really good. Especially since he can easily escape through the stairs to the left if needed, or just go straight back. Oh, that's nice dodge, nice dodge. Hans got, got blink faster than expected, so storm now has to play even more cautiously since uh, Axe's call, with along with the invoker spells, this means surefire death to storm. And overall, looking at the net worth, Slark's got nothing, almost, and Volker is really ahead, even if he wasn't threatening other objectives. And Storm, without Yules, uh, only has a very few limited options how he can engage in this, in this match. So it's minute 15, and if I was to summarize the mistakes, uh, Battle and Division clearly was what gimped Storm's early game the most. Missed some uh, ranged last hits by not being close enough as well. I didn't see how other lanes went, but apparently they are not good, so... Since we have concluded that early game was in the Radiant's favor, we should try to const construct a game plan for later. That was a really good fight. Uh, 
one thing to note here, if Storm has no mana, do not continue pursuing with just right clicks, you're useless, you don't, you don't contribute anything. If you have no mana, your next objective is either to go to the jungle with the clarities and farm, farm while we refill or just teleport back to the base and return to the, to the fighting field or jungle if you need it. But never ever just walk around throwing right clicks with no mana, this just invites you to be countered. Which is kind of what happened here. So what I wanted to say before the team fight is, is uh, as as soon as we decide, as we conclude how early game went, we should start constructing a following game plan for the mid game. From Storm's perspective, I've t talked about it already. Taking Yules and uh, helping to fight the Juggernaut and the farm Dax should be uh, utmost priority. While for Slark, since he is he cannot be aggressive without Shadow Blade yet, he should stay behind. And if Slark is staying behind, this means uh, the dire team, besides Slardar and Pangolier, they have very poor initiation, which means as as long as Pangolier's ultimate is down or Slark Slardar I meant Slardar, not Slark. If Slardar has cooldown on his own, crush, like they have very limited options of initiation. While Invoker and Purge and Axe, they are much more they have much more freedom to initiate. And what I'm trying to say with these sentences is uh Dire no Radiant will be much more aggressive than Dyer can be. From which we can conclude that as long as Slark is, Slark is trying to farm his Shadow Blade, Radiant shouldn't pick fights. The fights will come to them, so just place uh, defensive wards and the uh, best case scenario in this case would be just to split push, maybe try to separate them, because Radiant as a team has much stronger initiation. There we go. Hopefully I made some sense. Which is again exactly what's going on. Like this is good, like send two, three players. Try to get a kill on a split pushing hero since everyone is top. And oh hello. They are really good at ganking. The the, the radiant team. Uh, this was really good play by Storm, even though it, it accomplishes like it seems like it accomplishes nothing, but first it sends Juggernaut back to the base since Jagger cannot kill Storm, and it also uh, prevents the tower push and gives Storm some farm since uh, he, he got like two waves worth of farm, and he just nicely dodged a gank. So good job here. Really good call. Objective completed. And for the time being, while Slark is farming up, this this is how Dyer should play. Just try to split push a bit, separate them, because as of now they have no chances of being effective in, in team fights. Besides of Bangalore's ultimate. And as well, Pangolier's ultimate is negated by Juggernaut's ultimate, which is also bad for the Dyer team. So like I said, uh, if the fights are necessary, always try to make them from the defensive positions, from the towers. You might still lose, but at least you'll get a few kills maybe. Maybe your carry and mid player will get some uh, value from it. Which is a little bit what's happening. I'm not sure if the buyback was worth it though. And again, Storm is trying to chase Juggernaut without any mana. 
just realize that the team fight is over and go do things somewhere else. Go push a lane or something. Thankfully, that's exactly what's going on now. So good, good. Like as soon as the team fight is won, Raiden should uh, Dyer should try to do, reclaim the last spa last space. And there we go. We have a rune finally with the vision. As a storm, you always want to have vision. All 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 stages throughout the game. Runes are your best friend, and a picked up rune it always saves up a travel to the base. And as long as the Raiden team is separated, we can always have some good team fights with just two, three people ganks. Like this, this is beautiful. That's exactly how uh, Raiden should Dyer should play. Isolate, kill, repeat. Make space for Slark. This still applies that uh, solo players should not be aggressive since Raiden has much better initiation capabilities. Slark should just farm, do not try to kill something unless it's a gank on having clear vision. Most of the game throws happen when people do not realize where they are and how easily is it for the enemy team to join the fight. Okay, that was nice. With just a few uh, offensive items besides Shadow Blade, Slark can really start turning the fights. He can jump on Dazzles and Wokers, he can man fight spinning uh, Juggernaut, but he's not there yet. So while he's farming, Storm, and everyone else who can split push should do that, exactly that, and just join the fights when, when there is a tower threatened. I'm actually surprised that uh, the Radian hasn't tried to take Roche yet, so it should be really easy for them. Maybe I'll jinx it again. I'm also not very sure why is there a ward on the Radiance top tower. It accomplishes nothing since there's nothing happening. This was a good engagement. Because you had vision and you had people with you. On a side note, Cold Snap is a bitch. Let's talk Storm's item choices. Yules? Let's see how does Yules help here. Like, it doesn't prevent from Axis Call. Invoker can really pop it with just a few. A few just a spell, with any spell. It does save from Budge's ultimate and Jugger's ultimate, but that's about it. In this case, I would, change, I would say just playing more safely and allowing others to initiate would ensure Storm's uh, early game potential without wasting an item slot on Yules, which gives nothing, next to nothing offensively. And as a defensive item, BKB should take the cake. Since late game BKB, he actually it actually negates a lot of spells here. Like Axe during call will not make Storm kill itself, because Storm wouldn't be able to be bursted. It saves from all of the invoker spells, and Pudge during this member also would not deal that much damage. So as 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 far as mid game items are concerned, Yules are not really good here. Going for more offensive items like uh, Orchid Yules. What did I say? Did I say Yules before? Lincolns before? Let's start again. Uh, in this game, for mid-game, Lincolns is not really good. 
Having more offensive items like Orchid and Yules is superior since it allows Storm to counter ganks. While Yules will just while Lincoln's will just block one spell and Storm would still be open to everything else. Let's see what Slark has. What is he? Why is he? Okay, I'm pretty sure Slark has no idea how to itemize here either. Which is kind of bad because even the best Storm player is, is not made to man fight everyone. Storm needs a strong position 1 to function to do the fights. And Silk, since Slark continues to build like smaller. I'm not even sure what, what to say here. It's 25 minutes, Slark has Shadow Blade and has nothing to, that helps him fight or survive. Well, maybe we can talk about how what to do as a storm when your position one is kind of not that invested in winning the game as you are. So besides split pushing and choosing the correct items, storm. What else can storm do? Let's let's try to figure it out. One thing in this game I am noticing that the enemy is really not putting up that much pressure. I think they are attempting Roche, finally, yes they are. But other, th other than that, uh, the Dire still has all three towers standing. Meanwhile, Radiant could easily just 5-man split push everything, 5-man push everything. So if I was this storm, I, I guess I would try to cut some waves, push down the lane and just teleport back, try to uh, make space for Slark to come to do nothing still. I'm kind of angry at the Slark at this point for the storm. Like the game is going really passively. In in in, in the passive cases, storm could absolutely just jump jump, uh, jump to the lane, kill clear a wave or two, and jump back out. This will force the lane to push and and let storm remain safe. That's about as much. As about as much as what we can do in this scenario in this game, and I think there's a fight top. Let's let's see what's happening. This was good. Traded offlaners for carry. But this is like the third time this is happening. Storm has no mana and he is still going forward trying to push. Which leads to moments like these. This is probably the biggest mistake having no mana and still being around the battlefield. Like you either die or are forced to retreat either way. So without mana just, just go away immediately, get some clarities and regen while walking away. And this keeps happening. I think the enemy is finally trying to push. Like, if they started going 5 mana, I don't think the, that Dyer would, would have anything else to do here besides surrendering. Since Jagger has superior farm to the Slark. And Invoker with a, with a Scepter, Scepter also can teamfight much more f f efficiently than Storm, who has Lincolns and Kaya. The, the thing about uh, Dyer's teamfight capabilities is that as long as they can counter-initiate or initiate themselves, as long as they use uh, 
Pangolinus ultimate to the full value. Hang on, what's going on? What's going on? This is risky since there's no vision and the, and uh, Raiden can just rejoin the fight, which is exactly what happened. No mana, back away, back away. Okay, good, good. As a storm playing from behind, never initiate on an unfamiliar area. Because that's what could happen. Again, Twirling Radiant has amazing fight initiations, amaz amazing mobility with the blinks and invokers. And it should never be Dyer's point to seek out solo pickoffs. It should either be uh, smoke ganks in in areas where you know the, the person is solo or defenses on their tower, but never uh, solo initiations because Radiant does it better. And I think all of these mistakes have added up to each other, which kind of leads it leads lends itself to a loss. Dyer's top tower is under attack. And with the ages, uh, the uh, Raiden is finally pushing, which they should have done a long time ago, from their superior early game advantage. Okay, so to summarize all my ramblings throughout the game, what caused this loss was little things like inefficient mid laning with the vision and the bottle, then Dyer playing inefficiently from behind, they tried to take solo pickoffs instead of uh, placing defensive wards and just counter, counter ganking or defending under towers. And those are the biggest things. Smaller things like mana management also lends itself to a loss eventually. There we go. And as well item choices. If if Storm is playing from behind, he should opt for more uh, skirmish oriented build. Kaya Yules. Looking for me. Like in this case, Lincoln's is good as long, only as long as Pangolier can initiate and everyone can utilize the dis disabled stun time. On a side note, uh, creep, sp creep skipping, what Storm is doing now, is really good for defensive purposes as it allows for quick deep push. Also allows to solo pick off if someone is pushing alone, like Jagger could have died here if Storm was quick enough. But that's always risky. So I'm not judging if someone doesn't do that. Jagger made the mistake of being very low level in, in their in the jungle. A very low health, not level. But even then, if Slark has initiated and did something, it's, it's super risky, since, again, Raiden has amazing initiation here. And Storm with Yules could, like, save himself or others so many times in this match. Like, from Axe's call, from Jagger's initiation, after he... Well, not maybe, maybe not Jagger, in, in, Invoker. So yeah, I think that is all we can squ squeeze from this match. What could have done better? What could have been done better? It was mostly in incorrect play and incorrect items while from behind. 
and also the reasons why we are behind. This invoker was really quite passive in the mid lane. So Storm could have done more with just being more efficient with the mana management and ruins on vision. This is kind of a flaw in uh, Dyer's teamfight as a whole, like, with, uh, besides Bangalore's ult, once that's wasted, besides after Storm initiates someone, they they have like a downtime with Pangolier not having ultimate and Storm not having mana before they can do it again. That's why I was emphasizing on, like, smoke ganks, utilizing their cooldowns. The Dyer team is not set for sustained fights un until Slark gets the farm. And Slark is like 5th from behind right now. Really bad position. Like Storm's got, got uh, Lincoln's, but Lincoln's isn't, isn't really useful here. Even when he got it. He doesn't block anything that he wouldn't dodge by being mobile anyway. Well, I feel like I'm just repeating myself a lot here, because I've made all the points, so let's just uh, try to skip through a bit to the end. Maybe I'll see something worth mentioning. Well, finally Slarx has some teamfight items. Right now, the the Dire team could actually, I would actually suggest them to go aggressive, try to initiate fights, because Storm is kind of fat now. Stark is kind of fat now, and with the Pangolos ultimate, they can they can actually initiate and do some decent pickoffs. So let's see if that's gonna happen. Especially when they're bunched up like that. One more thing I didn't talk about is Storm's targets, like in this fight he tried to initiate on Invoker who is naturally either really really like uh, has a lot of health or can easily go invisible. So Storm's, Storm's uh, targets should always be Dazzle in this case and only then uh, Invoker since he can't really hurt Axe and he can't really hurt Pudge or Jagger. I would even not waste my Vortex, since it, Storm is mobile enough not to be caught by any hard-hitting carries like a Chugger. So Vortex shouldn't help him man fight. Vortex should be used to disable like a Pudge's ultimate, no, no, uh, Pudge's call, uh, yeah, Pudge's ultimate, Axe's call. And I think that's that's all I can think about. I can think of. I will put this exact analysis on YouTube, and hopefully, next time I'll be less rambling and more focused. Thank you for watching.